yeah okay now next moving on to making you understand what is lung protective ventilation again excuse me the experts the 18 percent of the experts who are listening to me i'm sorry that i'm taking my own happy time one thing they want me to talk for one and a half hours okay and the other is this is what they, they want me to talk right okay so uh, people what you're seeing over here is a plot between pressure and uh, airway okay pressure is here on the x-axis and we have volume that's a tidal volume and the airway pressure right and this is a plot what we call as a hysteresis the inspiratory limb okay as a person starts to breathe you need a considerable increase in airway pressures and alveolar pressures to open up the alveoli okay try to imagine a let's say a new balloon a fresh balloon initially you take a lot of pressure i'm pointing out to the x-axis where the airway pressure is slowly beginning to build okay you need to blow in pretty hard up to one stage and beyond then the balloon sort of opens up fairly reasonably and then you see my uh, the hysteresis taking another bend upwards the black dot over there beyond which point again blowing the balloon open is going to be extremely difficult or at least little more difficult that is when you are going to run the risk of bursting open your balloon okay so i want you to note that there are two bends or two points in this uh, hysteresis curve right the lower one is what we call as a lower inflection point which refers to the point where majority of the alveoli just open up and you see that once the alveoli are open up the ascending limb is very smooth the upper inflection point is the upper dot beyond which the alveoli start becoming over distended okay so you run the risk of barotrauma over there you run the risk of pneumothorax so every time you are going to move back and forth, that is below the lower inflection point and above the upper inflection point, that is when you are going to be harming your alveoli. Every time to blow open alveoli from a completely collapsed nature is going to produce friction forces, shearing forces. That is when you will produce what is known as a ventilator-induced lung injury. Likewise, when you over distend the alveoli, Apart from the injury, I told you already, you are probably going to blow open the alveolus so much enough as to compress the capillary and convert a shunt into a dead space. Okay, All these are what we land up almost universally doing when you ventilate somebody with ARDS. I'm really sorry that you're not able to follow my cursor. Okay, Excuse me again. So ventilating somebody in this middle zone, the blue zone, above the lower inflection point and below the upper inflection point is what we call as lung protective ventilation okay i hope that makes it clear now the next question is okay fine how do i do that by look at the right side of the slide by using these targets use a low tidal volume 6 ml per kg predicted body weight okay now traditionally at least in anesthetic practice, we used to use tidal volumes of anywhere between 10 to 12 ml per kg because we used to be worried about atelectasis in anesthesia, okay, which happens quite often, basal atelectasis, and that produces hypoxia. Okay, but you need to understand 6 ml per kg is actually our physiological tidal volume. That is where the number 6 comes from. Why do we use uh, predicted body weight, not the actual body weight? Yeah, so we use predicted body weight because the tidal volume is a function of a height of a person okay not the weight of a person that means to say somebody my weight is going to need probably 20 ml okay so forget that okay so remember these two things 6 ml because that is physiological and predicted body weight because lung size or lung volume is a function of height predicted body weight formulas make use of height of the patient okay the next target is maintain a plateau pressure of less than 30 centimeters water. Now, plateau pressure is, in other words, the alveolar pressure, which is going to tell you the risk of barotrauma from happening. It has been established from previous studies that anytime you go, you violate your target of more than 30 centimeters water. Okay, I presume everybody knows how to calculate the plateau pressure. I'm just going back on, yeah, okay. Just focus here. This is the pressure time scaler on a volume controlled mode. This is the peak pressure. Okay, I'm sorry. I again presume that the cursor is working. Okay, please look at the left hand side uppermost uh, uh, scaler that is a pressure scaler. You see the peak pressure and then suddenly it's taking a vertical down and a plateauing effect. Okay, so we do something called a inspiratory pause maneuver on the ventilator, end inspiratory pause during which time the uh, pressure within the system, within the airway and parenchyma equilibrate and you get this kind of a plateau. 
okay now that is what represents the pressure within the alveolus that is not supposed to exceed 30 centimeters water is that clear right i'll move on to mine yep Okay, so make sure your plateau pressure is less than 30 centimeters water. Again, this I told you can be measured in a volume control, not in a pressure control. And by the use of optimal PEEP. So you need to use a PEEP that keeps the lung units above the lower inflection point. I told you below the lower inflection point is when all the alveoli are going to get collapsed. You don't want them to be in that part of the hysteresis. You want them to be above the upper inflection point so that the moving up and down becomes a smooth process. Okay, So this is how you do a lung protective ventilation. 